It's Thursday, March 24th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and we have the latest area news, a look at the front pages of our newspapers this week, and a special peek at this week's editorial cartoons coming up later in the show. Rob will also join us with sports and weather, and Donald Ng takes a look back on this day in history. But first, on to today's headlines. The hunt for Rodolfo Ravello is over after an extensive 11-day search. Ravello kidnapped his 7-year-old son Ariel from a Unity Road home following a violent domestic incident that took place around 4.30 in the morning on Saturday, March 12th. The U.S. Marshals Service in the Bronx arrested the 43-year-old suspect on Wednesday. He's currently being charged with a federal violation of probation and faces eight different charges from the Trumbull Police Department that include kidnapping, larceny, strangulation, and assault. Following the violent domestic assault, Trumbull Police Lieutenant Leonard Sinto said that Ravello took several thousands of dollars of cash and jewelry from his estranged wife's room before waking Ariel and fleeing the residence in a 2015 white Ford Transit cargo van. An Amber Alert was activated that morning as Trumbull Police and other law enforcement agencies searched for the missing child who was later found unharmed in Queens, New York. According to a press release from the Trumbull Police Department, there are arrangements being made to serve Ravello, an active arrest warrant that police obtained on Monday, March 14th. Ravello's bond has been set at $50,000. According to reports, Ravello was a cocaine supplier in Stanford. Court documents revealed that he was arrested in 2011 for buying 50 grams of cocaine for $1,700. More on that story at TrumbullTimes.com. And in an update on a story we've been bringing you this week, Michael Kramer, the investment banker who owns the new Canaan property where a 41-year-old Queens, New York woman committed suicide on Tuesday, was not home at the time and neither was his family, that according to a CNBC report. Kramer and his immediate family were out of the country and only learned what happened when they returned on Tuesday night. According to a spokesman for the family, no member of the Kramer family was involved or injured in this incident. It wasn't in Mike's house. They had no idea what happened, and they are obviously upset about the incident. The woman, 41-year-old Heather Sturtz, died of a gunshot wound. There's much more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. And Milford police are looking for a man they say exposed himself at a local Dunkin' Donuts on Sunday. Police said the incident occurred March 20th at about 5.20 in the morning at the Dunkin' Donuts on Bridgeport Avenue. The man entered the Milford business and went into the restroom. Upon exiting the restroom, he walked up to the counter and exposed himself in front of a female employee. The man then left the business. The suspect is described as white, about 5 feet 2 inches, 25 to 35 years old, and weighing about 200 pounds with dark eyes and brown hair. The employee said that the same man was in the store two weeks earlier. Anyone with information is urged to contact Milford Police at 203-878-6551. And police dogs brought on site to check for a bomb at Easton's Helen Keller Middle School found nothing yesterday and students returned to class. Police Chief Tim Shaw said the site is all clear. He said canines were brought in from Stanford and Norwalk. Fairfield and Trumbull police also assisted with the children in traffic. Peggy Sullivan, the director of operations for Easton Reading and Region 9 schools, said parents were kept informed through email updates that officials sent out. She said that the 306 students who attend the middle school were evacuated safely and well. Easton police are investigating a note that was left in a boy's bathroom yesterday morning that prompted the bomb scare. There's more on that story at EastonCourier.com. And Milford police have arrested a Bridgeport man suspected of dealing drugs in the city. According to a police report, 26-year-old Hale Wilson of Bridgeport was arrested on a warrant March 21st, charged with possession of narcotics, narcotics with intent to sell, and possession within 1,500 feet of a school. On September 24th, the Milford Police Department Narcotics Unit interrupted a hand-to-hand -hand drug transaction involving Wilson near Bridgeport Avenue and exit 34 of I-95. As detectives approached, Wilson fled the scene in his vehicle at a recklessly high rate of speed. Detectives later located Wilson's vehicle unoccupied in Bridgeport, and they were able to identify him as the dealer and operator of the vehicle. Crack cocaine was located inside the car with the assistance of Milford Police Department's narcotics detection dog, Cedar. Wilson was released on a promise to appear in court on April 19th. 
And there was heightened security at New Britain High School today, the day after police said a huge fight broke out around dismissal time. WFSB reports that New Britain police said they plan to have extra officers at the school when students arrived this morning and when they left this afternoon. They said the brawl broke out right as the school's 2,600 students were leaving on Wednesday afternoon. Police said three students were about to fight when the mother of two of them became involved. That's when they said the brawl became bigger. Chief James Wardell the new, of the New Britain Police Department said that several officers got jumped in the incident. He said, I think all the officers that were involved did so in a very professional manner. Officers recovered a knife from a nearby sewer drain after the fight, and when all was said and done, 11 people were arrested, including three adults and eight children. Both school officials and police say that they're investigating. Felony charges were filed against some of the adults involved, but none of them have yet been identified. And according to the Reading pilot, Route 53 will be closed just south of its intersection with Umpawag Road beginning the first week of July, according to the Department of Transportation. It's going to remain closed for about 42 days. The road will be closed to repair a bridge, and the project begins this week and ends in September. Before it is completely closed in July and afterwards until September, Route 53 will be converted to an alternating one-lane road at the intersection. It is expected most traffic that usually travels south on Route 53 will detour through Umpawag Road, a residential road with tight turns. More on that story at TheReadingPilot.com. But we're going to throw it over to Rob Adams now for a look at today's forecast. Rob? All right, Kate, as we look outside right now, some clouds hanging around. It's a partly sunny day and temperatures will fall during the afternoon to around 47 by 5 o'clock. We'll have a wind out of the east at 11 miles per hour. Patchy drizzle tonight before 9, then areas of drizzle and a shower, a chance of a shower at the very least, between 9 and 2 tomorrow morning, then a chance of showers after 2 tomorrow morning. Bottom line, it's going to rain, mostly cloudy. Cloudy temperatures rising to around 53 by the morning. To Friday, showers and possibly a thunderstorm mainly before 3, then a chance of showers and thunderstorms after that. High near 65 with the wind out of the south from 9 to 11. Friday night, more showers, partly cloudy, low 35. The wind out of the north from 9 to 14. That is a raw night, so keep that in mind. To Saturday, sunny and 53. Sunday, mostly sunny and 54. Monday, chance of showers, rain likely, mostly cloudy, 56. 52 for Tuesday, 55 for Wednesday. Temperatures right now, Ridgefield, you're at 49, Easton at 48, and right here in Shelton, 49 degrees, Kate. All right, thanks so much, Rob. We're going to step out for a break. Rob will have the latest sports update after this, and Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history, and we have some more news coming up after this. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the Nutmeg State? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 1230 to find out. 
We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAA's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse, Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. We're back on this March 24th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. It's time to throw it to Donald Ang's look back on this day in history. Check it out. A disaster whose effects are still being felt. But first we go to 1603. Tokugawa Ayasu is granted the title of Shogun or Supreme Ruler from Emperor Goyose and establishes the Tokugawa Shogunate in Edo, Japan that would rule for 250 years. The James Clavell novel Shogun loosely based on Tokugawa. 1832 in Hiram, Ohio, a group of men tar and feather Joseph Smith, the Mormon leader, over a series of fraudulent bank deals. One of the numerous states, Smith soon decided it was a good idea to head west. To 1900, Mayor Robert Anderson Van Wyck of New York City breaks ground for a new underground rapid transit railroad that would link Manhattan and Brooklyn. That is the beginning of the New York subway system. And finally now we go to 1989, Alaska, for this. An oil tanker ran aground today off the nation's northernmost ice-free port, Valdez, Alaska. One of the worst oil spills in U.S. history brought Americans images of blackened beaches, dying wildlife, outrage, and betrayal. The evidence is that the response was slow and inadequate. Blame soon centered on the tanker captain. It is now clear that the captain of the tanker, who was not on the bridge at the time of the accident, had been drinking. But the accident also exposed the inattention to oil industry safety and led to promises to repair the damage that had been done. We will consider whatever it takes to keep you whole. And to do more to stop future spills. We also rededicate ourselves to transportation safety and to realistic planning for accidents that do occur. That, of course, the Exxon Valdez on this day runs aground in Prince William Sound in Alaska, spilling 240,000 barrels of crude oil uh, after striking the ground. In 2010, a CNN report alleged that many oil spill cleanup workers involved in the response had subsequently gotten sick from contact with oil. Anchorage lawyer Dennis Mestis found that this was true of 6,722 of the 11,000 worker files he was able to inspect, access to the records, though, was controlled by Exxon, which later issued a statement denying any health problems among the cleanup crew. That is your look back in history, and I'm Donna Ling. Thanks so much to Don. It's now time to throw it back over to Rob for a Nutmeg Sports update. Now, Rob, I know there's not too much going on right now. No, there is not much at all, Kate, but we've got some other pieces of information we can bring you this morning, so certainly we'll fill up the sports docket right here. Trumbull High Boys basketball coach Buddy Bray was selected FCAC Coach of the Year by his peers, and the Eagles' Jack Moore was FCAC Player of the Year. Moore, the 6'2 senior guard, scored 20 points a game to go with four assists and two steals. He made 90% of his free throw attempts, an honor student with a 3.7 GPA. He is considering Trinity College, Salve Regina, and Roger Williams. He played in the coach Coach's Class Double L All-Star Game. Ben McCullough, a 6'4 center, was named second team All-FCAC. The senior who is considering Eastern Connecticut and Thomas College of Massachusetts averaged 12 points and 9 boards per game while making 51% of his shots from the floor. You can read more of Bill Bloxham's story at TrumbullTimes.com. Many of the league's top basketball stars will hit the hardwood one more time when the FCAC holds two All-Star games at Ludlow High School on Monday, March 28th. The first game will feature junior players and will tip off at 6 p.m., and the second contest will feature seniors and begin at 7.30. Three-point shooting contests will be held at halftime of both games. Tyrell Alexander of FCAC champion West Hill, as you see right there, is among those playing. Admission for the event, $5, and it will be donated to the Special Olympics Unified Sports, the 
event will be held, as I said, at Ludlow High School. Junior teams will be coached by the aforementioned Buddy Bray of Trumbull and Joel Garriak of Wilton, while the senior teams will be coached by Casey Bach of Danbury and Ryan Swaller of Fairfield Ward. We do have a game to tell you about, and it's from the AHL. We don't often talk about the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, but we should. The Sound Tigers allowed, however, not such good news. Three power play goals last night in Portland, Maine, as they fell to the Portland Pirates 6-3. The Tigers find themselves in fourth place in the Eastern Conference, five points ahead of both Portland and Hartford. Mike Halmo scored his 18th of the year for the Sound Tigers. From Greenwich, the Greenwich Board of Estimate and Taxation cut a request for $40,000 for a study used to determine improvements to Cardinal Stadium, the home of the Greenwich High School football team, lacrosse team, as well as track and field and more. The Greenwich Time reports the decision was made along party lines with Republicans in favor of the line item and Democrats opposing it. Proponents of the money want a better concession stand to replace the aging Cardinal's nest as well as bathrooms instead of the portable toilets that are currently used. The bleachers and press box are also in need of improvements. Finally, those in favor would like to see a new scoreboard replacing the one that has existed at Cardinal Stadium since 2000. And I can tell you, as someone who called a lot of games in that building, I've watched that scoreboard flash on and off. It has aged quite a bit. You know, certainly as a broadcaster, as a sports fan, you want to see the improvements for these kids, but I know there are budgets that need to be dealt with. With sports, I'm Rob Adams. Kate, back All to you. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, getting back to some more news today. In New York State, as of March 27th, residents there will no longer have the opportunity to shop around for the best prescription price, as New York will become the first state to require all prescriptions to be created electronically. The HAN Network's Westchester County paper, the Lewisboro Ledger, reports that the mandatory shift from paper to electronic prescriptions is part of phase two of the iStop program that the state legislators adopted in 2012 in an effort to curb prescription drug abuse. According to Governor Andrew Cuomo, this reform will improve patient safety, reduce the number of fraudulent or stolen prescriptions, and help combat prescription drug abuse across New York. The first phase of iStop created a system that doctors could use to check whether a patient recently filled a prescription for a pain medication, which prevented addicts from being able to shop around with duplicates of the same prescription from different physicians. The program also alerted doctors if there was a history of drug abuse. According to the health department so far, the program has reduced the number of controlled su substance prescriptions from about 24.3 million in 2013 to 23.9 million last year. And back in Connecticut and in Stratford more specifically, the uproar caused by the trapping and killing of beavers in Roosevelt Forest will prompt the forest commissioners to call for a ban on trapping. On Wednesday night, the Forest Commission approved a resolution that will ban the trapping of animals or birds in the forest or any public park in town. The resolution also calls for the creation of a nuisance wildlife subcommittee to create a long-term wildlife management plan to preserve the forest for safe and enjoyable use for all town residents. Town council members will have to vote at its next meeting in April to make it official, but Forest Commission Chairman Bob David expects that will happen. David said Tuesday that the, he and town officials consulted with the Humane Society of the United States to develop a plan so beavers and humans can coexist. The ban comes after the Forest Commission voted recently to set traps to stop the beavers who had built a dam in Pumpkin Ground Brook. Town officials said the dam had created flooding concerns for residents living nearby. So far, two beavers have been caught and killed in the traps that were set. The remaining traps have now been removed. And finally, the Fidelco Guide Dog Foundation will hold its first ever Wilton-based volunteer orientation at its 27 Cannon Road campus on Saturday, April 2nd from 10 to 11 in the morning. Fidelco is an internationally accredited nonprofit based in Wilton that provides German Shepherd guide dogs to blind and visually impaired individuals at no cost. Since its founding in 1960, Fidelco has placed more than 1,400 of its specially bred German Shepherds with men and women across North America. But you can get more on that story at WiltonBulletin.com. We're going to step out for a break. When we come back, Josh Fisher is going to be joining me this week to take a look at the front pages of our HAN Network community papers this week. And later on, we take a look at our editorial cartoons this week. That's coming up on your coffee break after this.
Can't wait for it to get warmer so you can start fishing again? Get over to the dock shop where they have the latest in fishing tackle, marine electronics, boating supplies, and more. But remember, the dock shop isn't your average tackle shop. You'll also find the finest selection of nautical apparel, jewelry, home decor, and gifts in New England. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, dockshop.com. A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with A Better View, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. Alberto Londano Professional Painting, Wallpapering, and Carpentry has been serving Fairfield County for over 20 years. Based in Norwalk, Alberto takes pride in his work by offering you only the best quality service and products. Call Alberto today to get a free estimate and be one step closer to a new and exciting home makeover. 203-866-9635. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng. We're the home team for Nutmeg Sports, Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports. So come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock, Monday through Wednesday right here on the HAN Network. We're back on your coffee break. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and I'm joined now by Josh Fisher. And we're going to take a look today at the front pages of our HAN Network newspapers this week. Josh? Yes, we are, Kate. And we'll start off with the New Canaan Advertiser. Um, all sorts of things going on on the front page Lock of the Advertiser on. this week. A uh, sad story, of course, about this woman from out of town who uh, it looks like right now, you know, just she, uh, she killed herself, but it was on someone's property. It doesn't seem like she's necessarily related to those Connected people. Connected to them, right. Um, so she was from Queens and somehow ended up in New Canaan and uh, shot herself. Uh, but then some more positive news. Uh, they had the annual Easter egg hunt at <clears throat> the, the Young Women's League in New Canaan Runs over at Waveney Park today. A uh, nice photo there by Michael Caterivas of the chaos that is an egg hunt <laughs> on a big lawn. And then some people are also leaving uh, bags of poop. Dog poop. Dog we, poop. Should say no, <laughs> we assume it's dog Let's poop. Clear that up. I, mean, I know the Milford Answer Book once had a typo where they, <laughs> they didn't mention that you needed to pick up your dog feces. <laughs> so there was an issue. I mean, there's no word on whether or not Greg, Greg Riley actually <laughs> tested this to make sure it's all dog poop, uh, but. <laughs> They are, uh, it's, a, it's an annual lab. problem in New Canaan. People kind of walk, they, they leave it all in the same it's spot. It's been a problem in Trumbull, too. When yeah. people don't see a garbage can, they just, but what's the point of bagging it and then just leaving it behind? Right. Just find a garbage can for it. Not nice. Anyway, well, I'm taking a look at the front page of the Trumbull Times, uh, a story that I remember covering when I was editor there, uh, which was a wall repair at Madison Middle School is now leading to some conflict between Democrats and Republicans because apparently the Republican Town Committee uh, took a donation from this contractor that did that wall repair, which was, mm. uh, according to First Lake Winston Harps, an emergency repair. There was no bid involved. They just kind of gave it to this company. So it seems like there's some conflict there with that, uh, as well as an adorable dog photo by Lisa Romanchik uh, with Romeo the Bulldog being toweled off hmm. uh, after a uh, dog cleaning event at the Romeo Trumbull Agri-Science and Biotechnology Center. So very cool there. And uh, census data leading a push to uh, for Tim Herbst to add a new senior center, to build a new senior center in Trumbull. I know that's causing a lot of discussion. And something we mentioned earlier this week on Coffee Break, survey results showing that uh, there's been a decrease in students who are drinking alcohol and using marijuana. Hmm interesting data there oh, yeah. uh, over in Reading this will uh, affect a lot of morning commutes certainly route 53 which uh, runs through the town connects uh, Reading with Bethel and uh, on the other side it leads toward 
toward Norwalk through Wilton uh, will be closed on the Umpawag uh, Road intersection, yeah. which is up towards the north the north end of Reading, toward uh, West Reading and Bethel. So forty two forty two days. days. Yeah. What and are the chances? And what are the wow. chances of the state actually getting that that done in, in 42, 42 days? days? Yeah. So, uh, and then there's some nice pictures here of Barlow, uh, Joe Barlow High School's winter play taking its. Uh, oh, it took first place at the Connecticut Drama oh, Festival. That's great. So great news for those kids out there. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm taking a look at the front page of the Shelton Herald. Uh, a young Shelton girl designed Race for the Cure T-shirts. Very cool story there. An interesting story that I know a lot of towns are probably looking at, Mayor Mark Loretti has proposed a budget with no tax increases, mm. which has happened in the past. And in fact, one year he proposed a tax decrease not so long ago. So I know a lot of people pay attention to that. One thing about Shelton, the taxes are quite low. And a uh, man charged in gun thefts, uh, that ha this theft happened in November 2015, and he stole a safe that had several guns in it, and he's mm -hmm. just been captured. So that's the Shelton Herald this week. <clears throat> and then in Easton, uh, you know, Kate, you're a big fan of these these bear sighting stories. Yes. There's a little ex when this first photo came out here, and I know it's small on the front page there. It looked like it was photoshopped, doesn't it? It does because there's they that fire hydrant. Break. There's a fire hydrant there in the backyard, but apparently it's a New York City issued fire hydrant that the Let's family has in the back. And yeah, yeah, you know, I guess. They must have dogs that it, need to know where to go. It does look quite photoshopped, though. It does. <laughs> and so uh, it, it's a uh, dark bear, and uh, so it's the season. They're waking up, <laughs> getting ready uh, to go find their Easter eggs. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I am taking a look at the front page of the Monroe Courier. Interesting lead photo, a little black and white action with some uh, red heels. It's a little uh, like Zubavazi. It. Yeah. Uh, but it's almost time for Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, which is a big Milford campaign. And uh, a lot of towns get involved in it. It supports uh, the Center for Family Justice. So very cool photo there. And a story we mentioned earlier this week on Coffee Break, which is the teen that was killed uh, in a fatal accident last week, being remembered as a passionate animal lover, and that accident also leading to a lot of questions of safety on that road, which is Garter Road in Monroe, which like many of our towns, there's a lot of narrow uh, dirt roads. Mm -hmm. So some questions yeah. being asked there. Over in Darien, uh, lead story here is about uh, neighbors, weird neighbors objecting to some sort of redevelopment, uh, which is weird in Darien and weird in any of these towns around Connecticut. You know, neighbors are normally so into things changing around them, Kate. Uh, these are the old town hall homes, which is a senior living center uh, right on the post road. Uh, also, the police commission returned the, those two suspended police officers who were uh, put on leave after yes. they uh, were caught shooting holes into cars. Yeah, interesting story there, Josh. All right. Well, I am taking a look at the front page of the Stratford Star. A lead story, and I know it's a feature that's also up on StraffordStar.com right now, but a town man seeking help as his wife and newborn son recover in hospitals. Uh, there's much more on that story, as we said, at StraffordStar.com, but Melvin Mason did a great job there. A story we've been bringing you uh, the last couple of weeks, the Forest Commission endorsing a beaver trapping ban. Now, this is interesting because... Be, you know, there was a lot of coverage in the Stratford Star about these beaver traps that were being set, and mm -hmm. it led to a lot of outrage. And they've actually listened, and Good. they're going to remove the traps. What I wonder is, if, are there like a bunch of old traders that live in Stratford who are collecting <laughs> these beavers to trade the pelts with the Indians or something to get? You know, yeah. there is a beaver dam road in in Stratford. I wonder if that's kind of their you know, beaver trading gather. post. Yeah, beaver <laughs> trading post. <laughs> uh, our friends across the state line over in Lewisboro, the Lewisboro mm -hmm. Ledger uh, controversy. Uh, Stirring in Golden's Bridge, where there's a proposal for affordable housing uh, in that uh, somewhat rural community of Lewisboro, of course. And uh, so some other state work states changing its prescription procedure. Uh, the prices will drop for, for um, people in the iStop program. Mm. And uh, some more restoration work over there at Oldfield Preserve, which is a very uh, great place uh, there in Lewisboro. It's a nice little open space area, and that's a... Lewisboro's full of some beautiful open space and hiking trails.
Gorgeous. All right. Well, nearby, we're taking a look at the Ridgefield Press. Uh, there's going to be an informational meeting uh, hearing Monday in town where the school board will go over how it spends $140 million, which is proposed uh, for their budget this year. That's a great idea to kind of break it down mm -hmm. and show people where that money is going. And the staff of the Ridgefield Visiting Nurse Association lined up outside their new facility on Wednesday morning for its first portrait. So their brand new facility, which has been in the works for quite a while, uh, uh, is now complete. So some good news there. It is. In Wilton, the <coughs> annual list of the highest paid workers in town of the 20 highest paid uh, town employees, 12 were employees of the Wilton Police Department. Kind of typical. Usually the police get a lot of overtime, often not paid by the town, paid by, uh, you know, that's subcontracted out. And then they tore down this house uh, on Ridgefield Road in Wilton. It was one of the last three Victorian Italiante villa style houses in Wilton. Mm -hmm. 160 year old house was torn down <clears throat> this past week. The uh, Schlitzing house. I can't pronounce that. Yeah, that's Kate. a tough one. I don't one. know about you, but there's a cute picture of an Easter bunny on the bottom there with uh, some uh, <laughs> familiar children. Oh, yes, I see that. All right, well, taking a look at the front page of the Milford Mirror, uh, some stories that we've been following, a lot going on in Milford recently, but Christy Carlson Romano is shooting a movie on the Milford Green that was just happening last week. It's going to be a Christmas movie, sounds interesting. And the family of Marin Sanchez filing a civil suit against the family of Christopher Plaskin, who is charged in her murder, and the school system for not doing, uh, for not preventing that murder mm. from happening. It occurred at Jonathan Law High School. And uh, yeah, traffic is also the focus of a housing hearing. Seaside Avenue affordable housing protested. A lot going on, I know, at planning and zoning in Milford. And so. a nice coupon for a good deal on an oil change. Yeah, not bad. There Very cool. <laughs> so you can get that too when you pick up your Milford mirror. Uh, over in Weston, uh, once again, we have another story about salaries, which is typical this, mm -hmm. as budget season uh, heats up. And there, once again, of the 20 uh, highest paid Weston Town employees, 14 were police officers in Weston. I wonder if they have many more police officers than that in Weston. <laughs> uh, we also have some nice cute pictures of some of the newest members of Wells Hills Farm there in Weston. Looks like some cute little calves. Oh, they are cute. Are they close that's calves or goats? That's spring photo. No, those are, those are calves. Yeah? I think. Yes. Cool. I mean, we're animal experts here. We are. We are. We are. So. I wonder what veal looks like. Oh. Um, so, and then more. Another black bear. Beware. Oh, there beware. are black bears, They're rabbit animals. Out. Patty They're Gay's on the case. So. Yeah. All right. What else we got? All right. Well, finally, just taking a quick look at uh, Arts and Leisure this week. Uh, interesting piece on Stephen Schwartz, who is, of course, the famous composer. Uh, he's, you know, composed music for Wicked, among countless other plays. He's going to be appearing at the Ridgefield Playhouse on Saturday, April 2nd, for a conversation and some music. So, cool event there. Obviously, also a lot more going on in Arts and Leisure, including some great recipes. And one thing we forgot, Kate, is that the Darian Answer Book, which is now Darian, with an exclamation <laughs> mark on there, uh, is out in this week's uh, issue. A lot of great answers. It looks great. Yeah, Beautiful great. photo on the cover, Greg too. Greg Bartlett edited that uh, for Darian this year. And, yeah, cool photo. I assume that Brian Hayes Right, took yeah. it right that's what we have to assume because he takes all those great Ian, photos right? <laughs> yeah so and uh so it looks really nice uh, oh check ian it out. actually took that one. Oh, good job ian good job ian all right well we are going to step out for a break when we come back uh, special this week something we usually do on ct pulse on wednesdays but doug smith is going to join us and we're going to look at this week's editorial cartoons coming up after this I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. 
and playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 203- 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizik. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive Live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. I'm John Kovach. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune in to Yankee Fisherman, Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. And it's time to start drawing some conclusions with our editorial <laughs> cartoonist, Doug Smith. Doug, this might be my favorite one yet, my <laughs> favorite you. opener. What is happening here? Oh, I'm Did with you? the founding fathers there. You're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're cartoon bombing them. You know, yeah. you're the only one in a hat. Is that proper to wear that indoors, well, I'm just Doug? covering up my ugly head there. Because I didn't have, I didn't have the wig. <laughs> you didn't have the wig. wig. Yeah, you didn't exactly. have the wig. Okay, I get it. All right, Doug, so we're going to be taking a look at some uh, cartoons you shared with us this week. Let's start with the first one, Eric. Maybe. Eric. Eric. <laughs> Eric, it's not Good Friday yet. That's all right. You can just. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 830G. Oh, wow. They, that yeah, statute well, is really outdated. I know. It's, it's an ongoing thing in Milford and mm -hmm. a lot of other towns. So they were talking about, I guess the mayor decided it was, he went to Hartford, Hartford and complained right. that it was outdated and outmoded and one size did not fit all. Mm -hmm. So Right. So I like your idea of making mm -hmm. it an old, old yep. scroll. Yes. Very cool. And now tell us about this one, a zombie that's, house? That's in Lewisboro. That was a phrase coined by uh, one of the uh, heads of the town there, claiming, you know, that they got to revitalize the town somehow. Get There's a lot of empty houses that aren't selling and are mm. just going to rot. I like that. So. <laughs> zombie house. All right, tell this us about this silly one. Silly play on words. Uh, just the health department wants to remind everyone in Monroe to <laughs> test your wells. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Okay, I don't like the looks of this. Uh-oh. What finance board is chopping that's their in budget? Ridgefield. They were talking about uh, cutting some budgets. Mm -hmm. Nothing definite yet, but... I'm sure most who's finance under, Who's under that mask? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I, I, Ridgefield I, Board of Finance member? Sort of my physique <laughs> there. Start. Maybe I use myself as a type of... <laughs> Oh, beavers. Oh, tell us. Oh, I just mentioned that Stratford had just, a beaver right, dam in, uh, road. Built in uh, Stratford, beaver <laughs> dam road. Yeah. Then they think it's cute. We build dams. Mm -hmm. The next thing we know, they're trying to kill us. Yep. But there's, there's been a conclusion finally this oh, week. They're going to stop trapping the beavers. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes, which is going to hurt the beaver pelt trading business in Connecticut. <laughs> uh, on Beaver Dam Road. I was looking forward to one of those like beaver pelt <laughs> pots, you know, from the 19th century. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to trade that for my Easter ham. Now tell us a little bit about this one, Doug. Some more dad humor there. Uh, dad Trefoil humor. Park was just uh, sold in Trumbull. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love it. Oh, what's this one about? Uh, this is uh, the... You were just mentioning oh, yeah. the pieces in Wave and Loop. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a... It's almost like a Clifford, a exactly kind of. Exactly, the yeah. big red dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always wonder what would happen with the St. Bernard's. <laughs> that would be a, a, a big mess, yes. Oh, it's and bear season. Yep, so we were just you were just mentioning the bears, and uh, we had right. Black Birch Court, so I just changed it to Black Bear Court. I like nice. it. We've been getting our bear spottings that And happen. I used the same cartoon for a couple of the towns, which had uh, streets oh, which had the name Black Bear Black Road. Bear. I like that. Nice. Make it work for, for several. Oh, look at that. Black <laughs> Bear Hill Road. Black Bear Hill Road. How, how a little you, bit of a reach, yeah. but. <laughs> how do you decide, like, how well these animals can spell? Because I know sometimes, like, they misspell and maybe put their R backwards. Well, this is one of those here. train bears. Yeah, they're good. Bears, bears are smart, smart yeah. right? That's why they sleep through the winter. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So after the bears, you know, I went back and I looked over nearly a decade worth of cartoons and I saw that 
Bears were a real prevalent theme in a lot of my cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> with, uh, so these are some uh, throwbacks? Exactly. There aren't many bears around here. What the newspaper <laughs> meant to say was there was beer in the area <laughs> on Roosevelt Drive. <laughs> Look at his human mask. I yep. like it. <laughs> and, and tell us about this one. This was in Fairfield. Uh, I just did a little uh, blurb there about the bears going to Wilson's Barbecue, a famous barbecue place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dyes. But... What happened was the owner of the Wilson saw that, loved the cartoon. I brought him the original, ended up getting a free meal out of it. Nice. So I was thinking maybe, wow, maybe I should use this power for, yeah. you know, except More. that it turned out that Wilson's didn't even advertise with us and they were sort of, in a sense, getting free advertising. So uh, that's of, let's why. not do well, that. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. At least you got a meal out of it. Exactly. And tell us about this one. Uh, that was just a generic. They overdevelop our territory and then the yellow bear encroaching. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Good point there. This was during one of the cold snaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, which we haven't had to experience this year, thank no. goodness. But, whew. All right, and what and about here's this more, one, Doug? Uh, along the lines of Wavenly there with the feces. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of to the Charmin, a little ode to the Charmin yeah. bears. <laughs> where's his bag to put it in? What's that? Where's, where's his, his bag to put oh, it yeah. in? Yeah. <laughs> A bear was spotted in Darien and Vermont. Look, Darien and Bear. Barry. How do you say that? Barry. 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 Well, Barry? Barry. This, this was kind of a reach on Barry? wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about this one. That was uh, Darien. There was an pro ongoing problem. Uh, people were, there was a rash of burglaries <laughs> in houses and cars. So they were just trying to stress the fact that people in town, please lock your cars in your homes yes. when you go out. Which we're still having to tell I know. people because those thefts are just happening all So the bears the got time. in on this. And I like it. <laughs> so just what do you think you're doing? Don't you read the news? It says bears are spotted in the area. <laughs> a little more <laughs> dad humor. We like it. And what about this one? This was a bear in uh, Shelton a few years back. It was stuck in a tree. They came and shot it with oh, a tranquilizer dart. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes. Never knew what happened to the bear. Remember but I the photos of the bear in the bed of the truck yep. tranquilized? Oh, and like a whole neighborhood was gathered around. So he's oh. probably in a Russian circus somewhere dancing. Oh, let's <laughs> <call that. laughs> or a bag of dog food. Riding a tricycle. Yep. Um, all right, what about this one? Aspetuck so Park? Uh, they show movies during the spring and summertime outdoors, so I just had a little fun with the bear spotting <laughs> in that town. You are a bear this. enthusiast in these cartoons. Oh, wait, this is different. And finally, What's not exactly a bear cartoon, but it mentions bears, and this was in <laughs> Wilton Bolton. So. Oh, nice. What's next? And there's a little <laughs> shark action, which we hope there are no sharks there. Yep, in Merwin Meadows? <laughs> That's going to be great. That'd be a good story. That'd be a good That'd story. A big story. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Doug, well, thanks so much. Thank you know you. I love bears, That's so good. I appreciate all the bear cartoons no this problem. week. All right, well, that is going to do it for your coffee break. Josh, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Kate. Have a great Easter. All right, now we will not be in studio tomorrow, but, you know, we'll have some special stuff uh, for people to check out. And on Monday, the tour resumes, the FCF tour. We're doing that live view of the Triplinski Easter egg hunt yes. tomorrow morning. That's what's yes. going to be happening. Cool. All right, well, we'll see you next time. Have a great Thursday.